Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Between Friends. Thank you for joining me. We are all about patches today. And man, I'm so excited to show you five different steps to make patches. You'll be amazed. And interestingly enough, one of our friends here that just joined us and typed in Jay Bodnard said, just yesterday, someone asked Jay to make patches, yeah, to make patches. And you know, during everybody's embroidery life, right? If you've been a stitcher for a year, 10 years, 20 years, somebody will ask you to make patches. And you would think it'd be easy to say, sure, I can do that until maybe you try. So today I'm gonna to break it all down for you. We're gonna feature some beautiful patches. We're gonna um, work with 40 weight exquisite thread and some beautiful King Star because it's springtime and we have a special on King Star. So let's see, uh, Jennifer Alexander says, patch and applique maker was her first dime software. Oh, congratulations, I, um, I love hearing that. We will work in patch and applique maker today. Okay, and oh, here's a nice comment from Cindy that she loves our countdown and stitches. Isn't that fun? I know we have so much fun over here. Ah, we're just spoiled. Okay, so please sign in, tell us uh, where you are you know, watching from and um, if you've ever made patches and if not, do you want to, right? Are you here to learn? Because maybe you have someone uh, who's requested patches from you. So let's go ahead over into PowerPoint and talk about, look at these fun patches, the uh, Route 66, 70, 80, 95. These are great mementos from a um, road trip that, you know, anybody could take, right? Anywhere across the U.S. And here's Sue S. Brown from OL Embroidery. Hi, Sue. So glad you're here. I know why she's here today for sure, because today is the reveal of this month's On the House project. Now, remember, our good friend Sue Brown over at OML Embroidery does a sew along this Saturday featuring the project that I'm going to show you at the end of today's class. So stay tuned, stay tuned. We're excited to show that. And it's a fun one and it's fast and easy. You could make a dozen. It's not a patch, but kind of almost. Okay. So let's take a look. Yeah. Why is there not a one? Hmm. I don't know, there should be a one here and it's not there and it should say, turn any design into a patch. Number two is use the right materials. Three, make your stitching pop, right? Patches are usually small, so you, color is gonna be your key to making your message visible. You know, it's a small canvas, so you gotta nail it. And then we're gonna do it, and after we do it, you um, will do the finishing because there's always one extra step, right? So, oh, well, there's number one. How about that? Okay, so now last week, I think it was last week, maybe it was the week before, on the house design was the year of the rabbit. Cute little design, right? Super cute. And you can turn that into a patch very easily. So I'm gonna head over into software and um, show you, oh, I have to be on the right keyboard, okay and show you that rabbit, okay? So if you remember, this is a free download. This is part of On the House. So you can go grab that rabbit. And you know, 2023 is the year of the rabbit. So how would we turn that into a patch? Well, the easiest way to do it is to draw an oval around it. And that's an ellipse, right? And so just click, left click with the cursor and drag the cursor. Now it's, we need to make that a color so that you can see it. Now here we have it as blue. And then, you know, you can take some time tweaking it, right? Making it a little bit bigger so that we have a little space around the rabbit. We don't want to crowd the rabbit so much that um, we have to allow for our satin edge, right? So a little bit of space around the rabbit is a good thing. And maybe I would make that just even a little bit smaller. Now, if I have the rabbit's parts all grouped together, um, I can, why won't it let me grab that? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Never do live software. Okay, we wanna group that. And um, with that grouped, why do I have, just bear with me. I, I'm having a little keyboard trouble here for some reason. 
and we'll take these two and um, and then we want to center um, a lot. Uh, anyway, it's good enough. It's good enough. Now, I can just as easily select that oval artwork. Right now it's artwork. So I want to then turn it into a patch. Um, so I can just hit... Um, <laughs> Here's a good lesson. Just click on the icon that says applique or convert to applique because a patch is really applique. And with that selected, I can then click on my change style icon. And when I do that, I have choices of how I want to finish that edge. Many choices, right? Raw edge, marrow patch, pre-cut applique, pre-cut marrow patch, pre-cut patch. And that's what I want to do. So I'm going to hit pre-cut patch and click OK. And with just that outline still selected, I can then click on the cutter and it will allow me to save it in the format that I'd like in the location that I want. And I'm going to just do rabbit to Rabbit 2, and then from the drop down menu, I will select FCM because my cutter is a brand, is a brother's scan and cut, but maybe you have another brand, so you could select the SVG or PLT. And then we'll click oh, save, and I get a um, folder that is now saved on my hard drive. I could also have directed that to save to a USB or something in that matter. And it gives me a preview of the cut file and also the cut file in the appropriate format. And then I take that to my machine and I cut it. But maybe we wanna add some text. So let's go ahead and click on the text tool and we will first select a Arial font small and I'll click OK. And now it's nice and small. That's what I want. So I will say year of and click apply. I'm going to change that color so that you can see it clearly. And in type, I want to do circle. And I'll click apply. And I am going to move that over. I want it to be positioned along this interior area on the left side of the rabbit. Mm, that's not quite working, is it? Because the curve is too curvy as compared to my oval. So I'll select that text tool again, and I'll just change that arc. And now um, I think that will probably do it. Mm, we just want to use the select tool, and then we'll rotate that just a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. Okay, and now we'll select the text tool again. And this time we'll do the year of the rabbit. Wait, we have, uh, you know what my problem is? I have two keyboards here and you really have to use the right keyboard for the right computer. So let me get a little rearranged here. Now we'll do the rabbit. And maybe the does it not need to be capitalized and we'll hit apply. And again, I'm going to change the color of that so we can see it more clearly. And in type again, I'll do circle and I'll click apply. Now it's outside of our area. So I'm just going to rotate it and I do that without the text tool. It just kind of gives me a better feel of, um, you know, where I want to position it, and it helps me define my arc. So as you can see, this is kind of a gentle arc as where this is really exaggerated like a circle. So again, with the text tool, I'll select that um, text, and now I drag the green circle to widen or soften the arc. And if I want to, you know, move my text down a little bit away from maybe his ears, I can do that. And if I feel it's a little too close, well, I like to do that with the select tool. And then I'll just go, go ahead and move it a little bit. Now, I'm all set.
Isn't that easy? So that's how easy it is to create any um, and turn any embroidery design into a patch. And I do have some um, images to show you. So let's go ahead over to um, maybe using the right materials first. All right. So we'll go over to the overhead cam. And first thing I want to show you is patches that are made with just thread. No fabric in here. These are completely thread patches, all of them. And, you know, these are all fun sayings, right? And they're, they're small little patches. I like tiny patches. I think they're super fun. And uh, these are all a free download with one of our products, which is the patch maker kit. So when you purchase that, this download comes with. But on several of the other patches you're going to see today, I used our poly patch twill. Now the poly patch twill is pretty stiff. See how it, you know, it really holds its shape. You know, I can't just roll it up and expect it to stay in that fashion. It wants to flatten out and it has a fused stabilizer already on the back. And it, that's what gives it its body and its stiffness. So, Let's take a look at some patches that I made with, um, with the patch maker kit. Well, first, let's go back over to PowerPoint real quick so I can just share what those um, items are. So this is the patch maker kit, and it comes with heavy water, heavy duty water soluble stabilizer and patch attach. So patch attach is the permanent fusible product that you put on the back of the patch to adhere it to other fabric. And the heavy duty water soluble is what you will use to stitch the patch. And we most certainly do believe that if you're going to do twill patches, it's easier to pre-cut the twill than it is to um, try to trim it in the hoop. So, and, and I have some step outs for you to show to see. So the poly patch twill comes in three colorways. And in each of the colorways, we have bright, uniform, and athletic. There are eight different colors in those colorways. The sheets are, mm, I believe they're eight inches wide by 13, in, no, by 28 inches in length. So it's really a very generous length of, um, of poly patch twill of each color in the colorway. And they make beautiful patches, as you can see. So let's go ahead and take a look at some patches that I made. Here is, um, aren't these fun? So here's a little handbag for my granddaughter, right? She's just one years old next weekend. And how fun will that be? She's starting to hold on to things. And she does seem to like little bags. Of course, she can't put anything in it, but that's fine. That's fine. She doesn't need that. So this is all one piece of twill. Now I added a second piece on the back so that it would be pretty on the back. And then at the last minute before I took it out of the hoop, I, I decided to add some little stars uh, so they are visible on the back. But this is one that I have, uh, did not apply a backing to. And this one, I do have a backing on it. So, and that backing is just the same twill and added it at the very end of the stitch out. And I have some step outs to show you that. Same thing on the flower, because I thought this would be a nice keychain um, ornament. And you know you didn't, wouldn't want to see the wrong side of the patch on the back. So I just add, added uh, the same poly patch twill that's used on the base uh, on the back. And uh, this is our King Star Metallic. Isn't that beautiful? That's our spring quartet. And so are all of these colors. Here is the light green, the aqua, the Pacific blue, and the lavender pink um, that uh, goes around the outline. And these others are you know, the same rendition, all different, all different, you know, uh, color sequences, but using the same threads. So let me see where I am next. So you want to make your stitching pop, right? And that is really important. So I kind of have a poor sample to show you here. Here's our, our rabbit, our year of the rabbit. So my first uh, attempt was to stitch the rabbit in pink, you know, for spring and for Easter. And goodness, because it's the same value as that khaki 
you can barely see it. I mean, and frankly, you can barely see the year of the rabbit on this one. But here, when I used a white thread for the base of the bunny, now you see that all his little decorative details stitched in the King Star Lavender just pop. They look beautiful. Maybe I could have used a darker color for the lettering, but um, you know, we learn, right? Every single one we learn. Notice though, that same collection, that same King Star Spring collection. Here's our four, four colors. When stitched on black, boy, they really pop, don't they? They really, really pop. And this is our fourth, uh, our quartet of the spring, all stitched. I did add a gold. I pulled that from my stash, stash that's not in the quartet, but I thought it needed a little bit of sparkle, right? A little bit of magic. So that's what you can count on. Um, when you select your thread to really pop, it's a small, tiny canvas. You don't get a lot of opportunity to draw the eye to it. So you really do need to make sure those colors pop, unlike, you know, a poor example like my bunny. So should have sticked with the red and white, but I wanted to stitch it in King Star. Oh, you live and learn, right? So speaking of King Star, I know we're going to kind of get off the path here a little bit, but I just thought I would show you. These are the four colors that are in the quartet. Oh, we just love them. They're so pretty, so attractive. And I have some lovely stitch outs to share with you because, you know, a lot of people are a little nervous about using a metallic thread. So I thought we would talk about its best uses. It's lovely for quilting because it adds just a little bit of sparkle to a quilting design. And of course, you know, high contrast, right? If you want to see it, make sure you're using contrasting thread. And here we have the aqua, which is gorgeous, and our Pacific blue and our green in these little ginkgo leaves. Now let's take a look. They were all running stitches, but so are the majority of these. We have a little satin edging around these hibiscus flowers, but not much. And notice when you have your lines of running stitches close together, you really get more pop. So you're, you're going to just get such a beautiful metallic illusion that, you know, the light can dance off of when those running stitches are close together. Here's a good example of the different styles of thread that many of us stitch. And, you know, here's a complex fill that's just flat complex fill, but here it is in an embellishment um, that is just gorgeous. I mean, look how the color bounces off those curves of that texture. Unlike here you get a sheen, but it's kind of a solid sheen. But on those uh, little round circles, boy, you really get an exciting light dancing across the surface. I'd like you to take a look at these shaped satins here versus our straight satins. Again, you're going to get more play off those curves than you are a straight satin. So if you have a beautiful design that's got a lot of curves in the satin stitches, consider using a metallic thread. It is just gorgeous. Here are some uh, little fish that are just, they're adorable, right? All swimming in a circle. Lots of satins here. And, you know, the, you can almost achieve movement by using metallic thread in that fashion. And here again, just some lovely running stitch lines, you know, assimilating air or wind. And, and these dragonfly wings are so delicate. They're lace-like. And so a, a delicate metallic really oh, just adds so much movement to that design. I love it. Okay. And then here, of course, is the seahorse. Is he gorgeous? Satins, little running stitches, satin balls um, accenting all of his, you know, kind of spiky details of the body of the seahorse. And then, of course, his sail or his wing here is so wide and those, scr those scrolls really add uh, excitement to the design. And of course, with the metallic, it really lets the light play off of it. So lots of fun with metallic thread. But I promised that we would talk about stitches. So let's get, I mean, about patches. So let's get back to patches. And um, let me just make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Let's see, we talked about make your stitching pop. So let's jump back over into um, PowerPoint just for a moment. 
so I can show you the special. This is our the Spring Quartet, which is on the special, the King Star Metallic. So it's, you know, a pretty significant save, savings this week for uh, the, the Spring Metallic Quartet. So I encourage you to take advantage of it. And you can see the image of those earrings, you know, which I usually wear. And of course, um, I'm wearing my, ja my, my jacket, which I didn't even talk about. So maybe let's do that. Let's um, bring me up full screen so they can take a look at these beautiful patches. Are they gorgeous? So these patches are in the patch and applique maker design. And it is a black poly patch twill that is the base of the entire patch. This purple is a batik, you know, that I added as an applique to just add some color to that guitar. And I did the same with the blue over here, a country, um, an acoustic guitar versus the electric guitar. And then the back has that really fun heart that says, I think it says music, mm, something about my soul, but fills my soul maybe. I don't know, it's been a long time since I stitched it. So how do you do all this? Let's take a look. Let's go back over to the overhead cam and I'll walk you through it. Okay, so we started with, uh, our first image was of those patches that mimicked road signs, right? So here I have the four step outs. The first one is to stitch in the color one, which will be an outline, a placement guide of the shape. And then you're going to place that pre-cut shape over the outline. Now, what if you don't have a digital cutter? Well, you can stitch this very same color one on hooped twill in a con and then stitch that outline maybe in white and then just cut right on that stitched outline and then you'll have a pre-cut image, you know, a pre-cut patch. So you don't have to have a digital cutter. But imagine trying to trim this in the hoop. This is stiff stuff. So how do you get it to stay? Well, you could use spray adhesive. We have our spray tents quite handy for that. Or you can just use tape. You can use a piece of, uh, a couple pieces of scotch tape. Then you just want to, you know, have that tape ever so lightly over the interior and you can rip it out later. So don't worry about that. I'm going to plug in my iron so that we get uh, some heat going on here because we are actually going to press, um, a patch in place and I have another tool a finishing tool that gets really hot I'm hoping I'm not gonna burn anything here but we should be fine okay so once that's placed now color number two is that tack down often patches are stitched in the same color outline as the patch in for instance in my out of office and my little handbag. Same color thread on the outline as the interior. But, you know, it's not, it's, you know, there's no rules, right? You make up all the rules. So this one, I wanted to have a, have a metallic finish, so I used my King Star as the outline. And on our Route 66, I was mimicking the road sign, so I did that in white, because that's what the road signs look like. So once I have that tacked down, the design will carry on to do the remainder of the design. It'll stitch this red complex fill here, uh, a, a satin stitch separating the two areas, and the lettering, the root and 66. Now, I stopped the machine here so that I could show you that if you cut two of the patch in the pre-cut, and you should mirror image the second one, just in case your design is not symmetrical, you then can add this on the wrong side, tape it in place, and make sure, it, or use your spray adhesive, make sure it's nice and secure. And then when you finish your design with that satin outline, your back will be covered. And you won't, and this is great if using as a medallion, like if you put an eyelet in it or something like that, maybe you don't you know, want to have uh, the stitching visible. So that's how easy it is to do those patches. It's so easy. So now that we have them done, now we got to put them on something, right? So let me clean this up and I'll show you. Oh, well, actually finishing is first, isn't it? And this is a good example. 
because no matter how hard you try, you always get these little, these little threads. Can you see that thread there? Maybe you can't. Let's see. Can they see that? Oh, where's the camera? Can you see those threads? Kind of like, you know, thread boogers. That's what I like to call them. See that? Blech, hate that. So I'm going to show you how I get rid of that. I use um, a wand, a heated wand that you would use for crystals or something like that. But I have a tip on mine that's pointed. And so I'm just going to ever so lightly slide this tip across that thread that's extending out from from the edge. I don't really want to touch the edge because if I touch the edge, I could burn the threads and loosen them. So I'm always keeping my tip away from the fabric. And like right here, you probably can't see that. Maybe we can get a whiteboard. I'll give you a little bit more. <laughs> see right inside there, how we have some of those threads that are just meh. Now, if this was colored thread, something other than black, you may very well, um, you know, you have to be careful. If you touch that fab, the satin stitching, you could burn it and you could have a little char mark there. So just be really careful that you don't do that. You don't actually want to touch the edge. You're just kind of getting those fibers off and... Um, being really careful. Okay, so I am uh, going to check my chat because I'm, I'm, I imagine there's several questions. And I haven't really been. Okay, you can see the thread. Why not snip the thread? Well, you can snip the thread, Vicki, but you almost never get it all, you know, because when you snip it, you could loosen it. It could, you know, it, it, because it was a loop. And if you snip it, now you could have two ends that want to unravel. So this melting cauterizes it, you know, it kind of like melds that polyester back into the body of the satin. So you're not actu actually um, snipping it. Let's see. And uh, Stephanie Hardy, you use your thread zap to melt those off. I've never heard of a thread zap. I'm wondering if it's very, um, very simple as to, um, I mean, very similar as to what we're talking about. Okay, so let's see. And how do we attach them if you put a backing on it? Oh, same way. So we'll do that. Um, I'll do that here in a moment. Okay, let's see. How, do you, how did you do the circle of fish? I just embroidered it. That was actually an embroidery design I think I purchased over at uh, Urban Threads maybe um, about a year ago. So let's see. What weight thread? Well, uh, some of my samples have the King Star metallic thread. And all of my other samples have the 40 weight polyester exquisite thread, except for the lettering is done in our in fine line, which is also made by exquisite. And that's a 60 weight thread for those really tiny stitches. Um, I'll show you some in a moment. I, have, I think I have some that are really small. Um, and let's see. Okay. What about fray check? Well, you, yeah, yeah, you could use fray check. I guess, Pamela, you could use fray check. I use that for like my serger. When I serge, that's how I finish my edges on, you know, the ends of a seam. I snip it off and then I use fray check. So I guess you could. I actually never thought about that. It's worth a try. Worth a try. Okay, so is there another? Oh, yeah, this one definitely needs to be cleaned up. So let's see if you can see that. Um, yeah, let's clean him up. He even has bobbin thread. That and because at one point there's white thread showing on there because I'm sure I did something wrong. So where's my little stand? Oh, that gets hot. Oh, that gets really hot. Okay, here's a great one to show you because this is the one that I didn't like at all. So let's go ahead and show you. Look at all that thread. I would call that like a thread booger. Ugh. So we'll go ahead and snip that off. Those thread tails. And that just cleans that up pretty well, pretty well. I don't know what happened to that. I guess I was in a hurry and didn't notice. I should have, you know, gone back over it. So, um, but that's better than it was for sure. Better than it was. Okay. And next up is to apply the backing. So let me, I'm going to 
turn off this hot wand because it's really hot. And I'll bring the iron in place. And I have to store this in a safe spot so I don't burn up the house. <laughs> Definitely don't want to burn up the house. So just bear with me a minute while I find a safe spot for this. I don't really know where that's going to be because that little base is so hot. Let me see if I can pick it up and move it. There we go. All right. This is why we don't do, we're not supposed to, we don't normally do heat on camera. Good reason. Good reason. Okay. So let's see. Now I have a cute little patch here. The multi needle needles, multi needle patch. So cute, right? And it doesn't have any backing on it yet, right? It's just thread. That's what you see is the wrong side, just thread. So I have a piece of my patch attached, which has a textured side and a flat paper side. So I have um, a piece of Teflon on top of my hooping, uh, my pressing station, and I'm going to place my patch wrong side, right side down and take my textured side of the patch attach and cover my patch with it. And then I'll take my iron and just hold that down and get that to fuse together. And I should have read the instructions because it's been a while since I've actually made one, but I think it's about five to eight seconds that we let it, um, we apply the heat. And it's, you know, I can feel this is tacky. It's also really hot. So this is a cool removal. So we want to wait till this kind of cools down a little bit. So, so when I remove this paper backing that um, the adhesive that's supposed to stay on the back of the patch actually stays in place. So once, um, once it's cool and it doesn't take very long, then we just separate the patch, I kind of work the edge off, and this stuff, the adhesive, will kind of peel away. And if you have excess, you know, rip off what you can and then just throw that away. And then any little bits that are around the edge, turn them towards the back. Just turn them right over so you get a nice clean finish. Nice clean finish, okay? And then I'm going to take a vinyl bag. Now this is actually lined in vinyl. You know, this is a bag that I purchased and it has that plastic, you know, it's a makeup case, right? So it has um, that vinyl inside. Now I learned <laughs> that if I were just to, you know, apply this and apply the heat, well, it wouldn't be a bag anymore because that vinyl would fuse together. So I'm gonna use my totally tubular pressing station. I have the narrow board in place and I'm just going to slide this over and I've covered it with the Teflon. That's really key because I also don't want this vinyl to stick to my wood, right? I don't know if it would, but I'm not going to find out. So um, I just make sure that now I have, you know, the, the wood and the Teflon is inside the bag and then I'll take my patch and I'll center it, you know, I kind of want to center it on the, that stripe. And I should probably have another piece of Teflon that goes on top, which I have. So I'll get that and cover just so in case there's any adhesive around the edge that I didn't catch, um, I, I don't have to worry about it sticking to my iron. And now I'm just going to press. And this is where it takes, oh, you know, 10 seconds, maybe 12. And let's see, Diane Meyer, you're asking, will this be recorded? Absolutely. All of our videos are always right here on Facebook or YouTube. You can come back and watch them at any time. And just like that, there's my patch. Now it's still hot, so it might be a little uh, loose. So I don't really want to pick at it, but once it cools, it will be fine. And better yet, my bag is not fused together. I can actually use this bag. So isn't that awesome? Now, for a sense of security, a lot of times we tell folks to, um, to also iron from the inside, from the wrong side. Now, I would have to place another you know, piece of Teflon inside the bag and get that iron down there. 
because that adhesive will flow towards the patch. So I can just, I want to make sure that I don't touch any part of the bag with that hot iron, but that's just like an extra step and it really does go a long way, um, especially on garments. So there you have it. Isn't that fun? Do we sell the Teflon sheets? I think we do. I think we do. Yeah, you'll have to look on our website. I'm sorry. So um, isn't that fun? It is so easy to make them. Uh, Jennifer Alexander, she's telling me, PLU fabric on the inside of the bag. That's right. Thank you. I'm always at a loss for words, it seems like. Let's see. Uh, Colleen Rouse, you have a thick honey jacket that your son-in-law wants a patch on. It's like a heavy-duty oil cloth fabric. Would this work on that type of fabric? I have adhered patches to, um, here, let's go to the overhead cam. Well, you saw this heavy cam. This is a heavy canvas lined with the PLU. I've done it on canvas shoes. Look how cute these are, little kids' shoes, pow and um, bam. And also on a backpack. Look how fun that is. Is that awesome? Look at all those patches on there. I had a blast making them. So they are, and these were all done in patch and applique maker. Let's take a look. So this is one patch and, uh, you know, I put those on a patch. I just did um, create outline, which we could go back into software, software and show you. Always like to put a positive message, you know, for a child to, once they learn how to read, that love is greater than hate for sure genius stuff. Isn't that what we want all our kids to think that they're geniuses? If you tell them that when they're young, it, uh, they'll believe it. And they are right. So be you, not them. Don't worry about others and future scientists. I always want, you know, all children to shoot for the moon. So, you know, just great messages. This is a heavy duty canvas. Uh, and of course, you know, the denim jacket that I'm wearing is, you know, denim. These patches were applied to the denim. So, yeah, I think a hunting, um, a hunting jacket, you know, a heavy canvas jacket, you just have to make sure you can get heat through it, right? You'll be fine on the top. And then just to do that extra press on the inside, just do your best. I'm sure it will hold for sure. I'm sure it will. Let's see. Sue Weigert says, wouldn't it be easier to press the bag right side, wrong side out? It would be. Sue, so sometimes you don't do things on camera for the first time, just telling you, you know, if I didn't practice that before at home, you just never know. You, you just, you think it's a simple thing. Oh, just turn the bag inside out. Yeah. Until you're on live, you know, Facebook live. Nah. Okay. So are we about ready to find, oh, with finishing, we already talked about that. I showed you what I do, what I do with um, that hot iron, right? It just kind of glide it around that outer edge, not actually touching the satin stitches, just the little fibers that are poking out. So be careful when you're working with that for sure. So it's time for On the House. And this week's project is for those of you who like to read. So it, it's a bookmark and it's so fast and simple and sweet. It's really sweet. It takes only three colors of thread but I actually, you know, did several samples. So that's why we have uh, numerous colors there. So I thought we would walk through it and I made three in a five by seven hoop. Um, okay, Claudia Orem wants to know, we say the name of the uh, patch software. So it's patch and applique maker software. And we could go back in there and uh, maybe let's get through on the house and I'll go back into patch and applique maker software. Okay, so you're going to stitch the color one is that diagonal line through the box. Color two is the vine. Color three is the flowers. And then color four is that outline, the square box. And then you take them out of the hoop and you're going to cut right on that outline that box that was there you are literally going to cut right on that thread because it's the perfect size and we don't want the thread to be visible later on then fold them in half on the diagonal and give them a really good press so they stay folded next hoop felt or 
two pieces of cotton fabric that are fused together, wrong sides together. And I have a sample of that to show you in a moment. And stitch color one. And do that in a thread that you can see because it will be uh, covered up by fabric. And uh, it's your placement guide for the, ooh, for the corner mark. Hmm. Okay. And I just want to show you how the tack down, or how the tack down, which is also the e-stitch outline travels. It starts in that top left corner, goes to the right corner and down to the bottom corner. So you don't have to worry about the embroidery foot getting caught on the diagonal edge of the bookmark. And, you know, you're just going to, you're going to snug that corner fabric right onto that placement guide and begin your e-stitch outline and it nails it right on the edge. And it's going to stitch off of the fabric, the diagonal, the triangle, and onto your felt. Uh, and that will finish it. And then you pull it out of the hoop. And now there's no stabilizer when you do the felt because all you're really doing is an e-stitch outline. So that's it. You No fills, no satins, nothing like that. So you don't have to worry about the back. Now let's go to the overhead cam and I'll show you um, the sample and then the latest one that I did. So just bear with me, I'll get this out of the way. It's so cute, that little bookmark. And you know, if you're in a book club, oh goodness, you can make up a whole bunch of these for all your uh, book club members in, in literally an hour. <laughs> it takes, I don't know, four, four, maybe five minutes to stitch this. It's so fast. So here's my sample, one, uh, one of the ones that I finished. Now, I did not remove that diagonal line of stitching, and I probably should have. You can do that. I did it on my later samples. And here's the back. So it's going to slide right onto the book just in that fashion. But then I thought, well, what if you don't have felt? Many of us have cotton fabric. So I fused a piece of the same fabric, right sides together with our fuse me, I mean, wrong sides together, and then hoop that. And then now I'll just cut these out. And because it's such a delicate little, you know, item that you don't have to be really fussy with, I would just probably have a ruler here and make sure that I'm not stitching into my e-stitching, but I'll be bold and stitch just outside of that edge. Now, because it is a fused fabric, you don't have to worry about any raveling, right? It's going to be stay right in place, those fused edges. So let me get a book. Oh, you know, we, we cleaned our studio horrors. And so now I don't have a book in here, but anyway, that's how it would look with the gingham cute on the wrong side and the, and the right side. Of course, this was a mistake. That's the salvage end. So let's get the other one out and we'll just cut right along that outline. And those of you who have hoop mat, notice how I put a cutting mat right on top of hoop mat because hoop mat is not a cutting mat, right? Hoop mat is not a cutting mat. And we'll just one more corner, we'll tidy up. Now, look how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? It's not, it's pretty from the front and the back. And it's so light and delicate. And literally you can make six of these, 10 of these in about an hour, maybe a little bit more, super fun. Close your rotary cutter. Thank you for the reminder. All right. And let's see, Barbara Bell Stringer. No, we do not have a store. We don't have a retail store. We're just a warehouse in Dallas. And we have another uh, location in North Carolina. But no, we're just, just offices in a warehouse. Not very fun. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Jay Bernard says, uh, you feel better about doing the patches already? And you're in Portugal. Well... That's wonderful. I've been to your beautiful country and it is lovely. You know, we do have a distributor in Europe uh, that's Creatrices em Embroidery. So maybe you could look up her online. She has all of our um, product over there. And what brand of rotary cutter do I recommend? Whichever one is sharp in my drawer. Mm -hmm. I really don't have a special brand. I guess I use Ulfa probably. Who's that? Yep, probably Ulfa. Mm -hmm. So where can you find the pattern for the bookmark? Well, that's our on the house design. 
and that's free on our website. So um, we'll go ahead and put the, um, the link as to where you go and get that. But you know, all year long, every Thursday, you get a free design from Dime, and that's, consider that's part of our On the House program. Once a month, the last Thursday of the month, I do a project that is part of the On the House program, and it's a free download. And uh, my friend Sue Brown at OML Embroidery does a sew along on the Saturday following the Thursday when, that I reveal it. So this Saturday, um, you can check her website and her YouTube channel, OML Embroidery, I believe is at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, but I think that's Eastern. So uh, not sure. Yeah, you just slip it over the corner of the mat. I could do that. Okay, that's a good way. Well, I could, or I could... Um, show it maybe over a quilt block. Why don't I do that? So this is how it would work. You just slip that um, on your book corner and it keeps your, uh, keeps your mark in place for sure. Okay. So here, um, here is our, oh, good. Thank you team members for giving um, Jay Bonard the, um, the uh, European distributor. <laughs> And they will make cute little Easter gifts for grandkids, Easter baskets. Yes, you know, get them reading young, right? Reading is the key to intelligence for sure. So get them started young. They'll love it. It can take them to places all over the planet. Okay, did we cover everything? I th oh, except what's going to happen next week? What's going to happen next week? Well, next week, so excited. I got Angela Wolf coming. She's going to be in the house. Well, she's going to be here on YouTube with me from her house to your, or my house. And uh, we're going to be doing a new product reveal that will have her, um, her newest collection. And we're going to be talking about making large design layouts with a small hoop. Or uh, if you have a big hoop, we'll show that too. But if you have a small hoop, you can do it too. You can do the shirt she's wearing, believe it or not, in a five by seven hoop. And we'll talk about stitching on knits and denim. So we're super, super, super excited. Yep, next week, April 6th, 1 o'clock Central Time. So hope to see you then. I hope you'll join me then. And thank you for joining me today. Have a great week and happy Saturday.